video, we'll be creating the super realistic stencil art. We'll be going through how to create the stencils in Photoshop, then we'll go about different ways you can cut it out, and finally we'll go through how to paint it. So let's get started. So for this step by step, we'll be using Photoshop, and the reason why we're using Photoshop is it just makes it a lot easier to create more realistic stencils and stencil layers. So to create a realistic sort of stencil, um, you really need an image which has a lot of resolution. So if you go up to your image and then image size, you'll see the width is 3000 by 2000 pixels. So you definitely want something at least that big. And the, for the reason for that is that it just captures a lot more detail in the image. You can see the skin pores, you can see the hairs, you can even see the fingerprint on the finger. All of these little details will really help to create a more realistic stencil as you can really try to capture some of those smaller details. But the one thing I like to do when I start out is change the resolution. Most of the images on Google Images have a 72 pixels per inch resolution, which makes it a bit hard for Photoshop to capture those details. So the first thing you want to do is change that to 300, which will make the image a lot larger. So once you've done that, you can hit Control minus just to zoom out a little bit and double click on the background layer and just hit OK. And what that will do is remove the lock and it will make it will allow this uh, layer to be editable. So first thing I like to do is just duplicate layers. So I have a couple of versions there. Um, on the top one, what I'll like to do as soon as I get into Photoshop, even if I'm not sure I actually want to use this image as a stencil, a quick way to check your image to see if it's even any good for stenciling is just to go to the filter layer and then filter gallery and then go to cutout, number of levels. You can sort of adjust that to the number of stencils you want to create. So for this one, I do want to create about eight, sort of uh, an eight layer stencil. And then edge simplicity will be zero and edge fidelity will be one. So once you've done that, hit okay. And because this is such a large image, this might actually take a little while to process. So now my filter has actually been applied. The image doesn't really look any different. So that's a really good sign. That means that this is a really good image for the stenciling. You can see some areas like under on the neck or on the hands that there is some signs of stenciling. But when you zoom in, you'll really notice that all the little different layers of the um, stencil. What we'll do is we'll actually save this as one of our layers and we can use this as our reference. So what we'll do first is delete the white background and I'll just put that first filtered image to one side, maybe move that to the back and then remove the background on the image that we want to use to create our stencils. So we'll delete, whoops. One thing what you want to do is if you're using the magic wand to delete your background is make sure that your contiguous button there is ticked on for the time being. So it just selects the white on the background and not on the image and we've deleted the white background ideally you'd actually use the pen tool so you get a much cleaner edge because you can see a little bit of pixelation but i'll do that later when i clean up my layers and what you want to do now is duplicate this image the number of for each layer that you want to create so i want to do an eight layer stencil so i'll probably do this nine or ten times that way I have a couple spare, just in case I want to go back and adjust a few things. All right, I think I got 11 there, that should be plenty. And then I'll just switch off. That's all right, I'll just start at the top one. So we'll start at the top and work our way back down to the bottom layer. So the first thing we wanna do when I, we start creating our stencils is I like to do something that makes the whole process a little easier. So with this bottom layer, which we used our filter on to create our sort of just, this is just a guide for us to help us along. If you actually go down to image and then adjustments, and then threshold. This is a tool that we'll actually be using to create each one of our layers. If you look at the one that we 
used our filter on, it's actually got these little spikes on it. And what each of these little spikes represent, for me at least, is each sort of layer that we want to create. So what you can do now is with this sort of in the middle of the screen, or if you're using Windows, you can also go uh, snap snipping tool. You can also use the snipping tool and just snip this. Because what this can do, especially for the beginners who've never done this before, is this can really help you a lot in terms of knowing where exactly to uh, create your layers. So we copy that. Changes, nope. And then cancel that. So get rid of that. We don't apply it. So we just want that little box. Move that to the top of our layer list and then you can see it right there so we'll just scale that up a little bit move that to one side and we can sort of just use that keep that to one side as a little guide to help us if we get stuck we'll make that one a little bit bigger so it's almost the same size i think it was about that big go again adjustments threshold so that way we can just move this box underneath that one and we can use sort of use that as a little bit of a guide so now we can sort of know that our first one wants to line up with that and wants to be somewhere around there. And then if we actually go down, zoom in on our image by hitting control plus, if we actually compare the one that we used the filter on and the one to the left, we can sort of see that the first layer where it's, it's, it has the lightest gray um, what we want to do is move this around until we sort of see something similar in terms of shape on these sort of highlights through the bridge of the nose. That's sort of what I refer to. I find that the easiest part to look at. So I'm going to keep mine around this area down here. I actually like to use the magic wand to delete the color that I want and make sure that you have the contiguous ticked off so it selects all of your little islands as well. So now that we've got that ticked off, I like to actually select the black and delete the black. Other artists like to delete the white. I guess I like to work a bit backwards, which is fine, because that's just what works for me. But you can do whatever works. So we've created our first layer, and you can actually see that we've got our first layer done. So that's our So I'll just call this layer one, just to try and keep things organized as I go along. Next, we can repeat this process for the rest of our layers. So let's just do layer two together, and then I'll probably fast forward through the rest of the layers because it's a pretty repetitive process. So now we just go to image, adjustments, threshold for layer two. And then if we move our box up to here, And we want to line it up with that second one. So it wants to be somewhere around here. Okay, now I'm gonna select all the black again. And hit the delete. And now what we can do at this stage, now that we've created two layers, is hit the Control and U button. And what that will do is allow us to adjust the color of that layer. So as you can see, as I slide this across, the second layer, I want to try and match up to that sort of slightly darker gray. And if I switch the rest of the layers off, you'll sort of see my first two layers all done and working pretty well there. So now we'll do this for the rest of the images. So here's my third layer, and then we'll go image, adjustments, threshold. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit, and then we can sort of adjust this to our layer three, which is roughly about here at 150, I think. And then select the black, 
delete it and then hit Control U, make it slightly darker. Ideally, we'd actually match these grays to the spray paint we're using so we can sort of foresee how it's going to look as a spray painted product or as a final artwork. And that's also something you can do just to double check before you go ahead and actually cut your stencils out. But you can already see here that the stencil is starting to form and we're getting heaps of detail in there, which is really awesome. So let's keep going through the rest of these layers and I'll check back in with you once I've done my last layer. Now that I've gone through and created each one of my layers and also assigned the correct color, you can sort of see here that my stencil is starting to look a little bit more complete. But the next thing I like to do is it's pretty important just to try and make it a bit easier to cut out because regardless of whether you cut it by hand or machine, um, you kind of want to simplify it to one, sort of get a bit of a more of a stencil look. So if you look closely at this layer, layer number three, you can see that there's lots of tiny little dots. Now we want to try and simplify this for two reasons. Number one, so the stencil holds together a bit better and just so it's easier to cut out. So what I like to do is I like to use a magic wand tool and make sure Contiguous is switched off and select that color. And that will select everything on this layer. And then what I do is I go up to the select menu, modify, smooth. Um, you can play around with this figure. I like to go with five as I find that works pretty well. Hit OK. And then if you look closely, you'll see that those dotted lines um, have sort of moved a little bit and they've sort of removed a lot of the unnecessary detail or like the excessive amount of detail. And if you go down in the bottom corner here, hit this little button, create a new layer and then switch this one off. And then you can go down to your paint bucket, make sure you've got the right color and fill that in. Now you might notice that there's a bit of ghosting and this sort of creates a little bit of extra detail that we don't want. What you can do is go up to your select inverse and that will sort of select the other areas and then just hit the delete button a few times and that will clean that up for you. So now that we've got rid of that, you'll notice that a lot of those tiny extra dots have sort of been removed. Um, but there's still a few that have been left behind, but which are way too small. So if you go down to your eraser one, you can clean it up a little bit further by getting rid of these tiny little dots, which we won't be cutting out. Um, this is the most time consuming part, actually, just going through and cleaning it up by hand and just trying to get it really nice and easy to cut out and looking nice, I'm trying to balance around the amount of detail that you got in your stencil. And then also come up to your brush tool and get rid of these islands, which will just fall out if you cut them. Like, they won't benefit us at all. So go through, clean all these up through the whole stencil. Um, you want to do this for each layer as well. So take your time, make sure it's right, make sure you're happy with it. And you want to do that and go through each one of your layers and simplify each of them, trying to get them to a point where you're happy to sort of cut them out, whether you do it by machine or by hand. So uh, I've actually gone through and done that and you can see that it won't look as realistic as it did, but it still looks really good. So this is what our final sort of image will sort of look like. The other thing I've done, which you might notice is add the crosses and this will help you to sort of line up each layer as you're painting them and also when you're sort of cutting them out. If I go through each one of my layers, you can sort of see, um, I've sort of simplified each of them. Just trying to get to, to a point where I'm pretty happy with it. And on this layer, what you'll notice is, because we had some islands like around the eyes, these were sort of floating. And if you cut them out, they'll sort of fall out and you lose that sort of detail. So what I've done is I've sort of created these sort of branches and what these do is they just hold these little eyebrows and eyelids and all these little details in the center of the stencil in the right place. And I've done this for the bottom three stencils. So you can sort of see here, here's the first one. I've sort of created some really simple sort of branches just to hold those details in the right place. Just so these areas will remain dark when we cut them out. Um, and once I switch these layers on, you'll notice that the bridges have been very carefully hidden behind the layers above them. So when you 
put the final image together it sort of looks decent you don't see any of the bridges at all so the next thing you want to do once you've created your bridges you created all of your layers and you're really happy with it is you want to put it you want to scale it correctly so the next thing I do is open a new document and because I'm going to be painting this at an A1 size, I'm going to create a document that's 594 by 841. That's A1, so create that. And then take all of my layers from this stencil. Hit Shift and select all of your layers. And then come up to the top button here, which is the Move tool. And then move it up onto this document here and then just locate it accordingly. So mine's already at the right scale, so I think I got pretty lucky with the size of the image in that sense. And then I do want this white around the bottom as well, um, and it holds together, it doesn't fall apart in this bottom area here. Once you've done that, at this stage you can actually print it out and cut it by hand, or you can start exporting this layer by layer um, to print by machine. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So if you switch off all the layers that you don't need and just start with a layer that you do. Um, I'm going to be cutting this out on the Cricut and the Cricut can only cut A3 at one time. So what I need to do is create a new document which is A3, click create, double click here, hit OK and that sort of removes the lock. Then I'll select my move tool again and move this white piece, white um, A3 document and sort of hit Control i to turn it black so it's easier to see and I just want to line it up in this top corner. And I want to create four of these because four A3 documents will make one A1 size. So once you do that, you can hit Control i again, hit the magic wand tool and select that A3 piece and uh, selected all of the white. So, uh, Let's switch off the background, the bottom white, and then just select this one again. So it selects just that A3 document. And then come down and make sure you have your layer selected. Hit Control C. Go back to your A3 document and hit Control V. And then you'll see we got that portion of the stencil. Sort of this is exact what we're going to cut out and we're going to cut out four of them and then piece them together after we've cut them out on the Cricut. But one thing most people who've used the Cricut before will notice as soon as you put this on the cutting mat it will move because it's got nothing to reference this top corner. So what I do is I delete this layer zero so there's nothing in the background and then I change this to black and I just create a little mark in the top corner here so I can reference this top corner and this bottom corner and that way I can tell the Cricut that I want this top along this edge to be 297 millimeters and this to be 420 which is an A3 document and the maximum size you can cut on an A3 and that way each four of these will be exactly the same size and when I go to stick them together they should fit perfectly. So for the next part we're gonna probably skip um, cutting them out on the Cricut because that's not the most exciting thing to watch and let's go straight to painting.